Mark here and welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. Uh, so today we got three new goats in. They just came in uh, and uh, we're planning on putting Flora, which is our sheep uh, that headbutts, uh, up front with the boys. So we're going to head out there right away. Come on, Flora. Oh, the bottom came off. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to hook that back up. <laughs> Here, let me in there, Tiana. What's up here? Look at all the grass. There's nobody to headbutt up here, except for the boys. <laughs> Where are the boys, anyway? Oh, they're way over there. Some new lands. Yes, that's the feeding station, and there's some salt. Mmm, looks like... Uh, <laughs> The residue has kind of dripped down into the tray. Uh, some easy pickings. Mmm, good stuff. Oh, there it is. Come on, boys! Here comes Billy. And Carl. And Chaco. <laughs> so Chaco is one of the new ones that came in. Uh, he was surrendered to the farm. Him and two girls. Hi, Chaco. What's that? A girl and a boy. Oh, the other one's fixed. Okay. Right. Okay. Those are some interesting horns you got there, little buddy. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> so he's. They're gonna check each other out. They were just put in uh, about an hour ago. So now you've got some, uh, some buddies. <laughs> uh, so I talked about in the last video how there's all of this greenery all through here. Look at all this vegetation. Uh, Broad-leaved, which they really love. Uh, so we want to uh, put a few more animals up front here. Uh, and uh, this was a, uh, because he is intact, uh, we wanted to put uh, Chaco up here. Uh, and then of course, um, Flora. Uh, Flora has been headbutting visitors, uh, so we needed to, uh, uh, we, we have been putting her in with Sheldon, uh, but then people walk through that pen as well. So I think this is going to be an ideal place to put her. Um, <laughs> Billy, Billy is alpha here. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> nice tongue, buddy. <laughs> uh, so I think Billy will kind of put her in her place. <laughs> oh, goats are funny. Male goats with the tongue. Who's that? <laughs> you are hilarious, bud. Aren't you? <laughs> oh, there we go. Knew that was going to come. Sheep have very hard heads. Oh, okay. Oh, no, she's still going to push push forward. She gives a good uh, a good hit anyway. <sighs> But they're going to just, um, they're going to assert each other's dominance and uh, they're going to find uh, where they belong in the, uh, in the hierarchy. Uh, it looks like Billy's going to hold dominance over, uh, over Chaco. <laughs> he says, I'm out of here. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> oh. oh, boys. Carl's just staying out of things. <laughs> he says, no, I'm good. I'm an older boy. I don't need, uh, need to play fight like you younger generation. I think Flora kind of knows. 
I think she's like, okay, you win. Right, Billy? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You want to fight me? <laughs> no. I'm at the top of the hierarchy, right, buddy? Yes. <laughs> So another important thing is to have, uh, when you have animals together, males, um, you always want to make sure that they have a large open space that they can get away. Uh, and then of course we've got the old chicken coop here, uh, which this wire is disconnected. Actually I'm going to go and grab some cutters right away because that's been hanging there forever. Uh, it's uh, wiring for the old chicken coop that we had, but once we moved it we disconnected uh, the wire. Um, but uh, this area here is uh, a, a space that they can get away, some shelter. Uh, and then of course we've got the other shelter over here. So there's a few different areas uh, that they can kind of get away and uh, uh, out of the rain, which it looks like it's going to happen sometime today. Fernando, what are you doing, buddy? What's up? Yeah? Really? Did you have fun? Oh boy, <laughs> Fernando the turkey. <laughs> Hazel is going up to her favorite spot, it looks like. Tara decided to put the hay up here. Uh, she had a block uh, and uh, it's underneath here so it won't get rained on because, uh, yeah, it's still looking pretty dark. No rain yet, right Sheldon? <laughs> this is their little feed trough. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> uh, Sheldon was, uh, he's a fixed male. And, uh, but he still has those, um, those moments of a intact male, uh, where he kind of, he's, he's a funny character. Uh, so the other two new ones here, oh, look, there's Mama there. So her name is Princess, and she has a little one. A princess is a little bit, um, a little bit shy. Uh, her little boy is, uh, called Puckaroo but I think we're just gonna call him Roo, aren't we? Yes, so he is, um, he's a little bit more hands-on than Mama is, aren't you, buddy? Really nice markings. Um, we're not sure of the breed, she said pygmy, but I think we're going to lean a little bit uh, towards Alpine, um, just because of those markings. And he is actually only, apparently, only about seven weeks old. Um, so he's uh, quite a bit uh, larger than what a pygmy would be at seven weeks old. Hey? Yeah, see, you're still a little skittish. Uh, they like to jump up here on the table uh, so that they can reach the willow tree, uh, which they really love. Hey? You are just a little cutie. Yeah. So we just want to be slow. Um, and, and not startle him, but he is actually pretty good. Uh, we just have to work on your mama, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> is she calling you? <laughs> so they came in because their uh, owner just, uh, well, she ran into uh, some personal problems um, and uh, had to find a home for the goats. Uh, so she surrendered them over to us, so they're going to remain here. Um, we may rehome, we may not. Uh, we'll um, see how they fit in and see what people think. Hi, buddy. <laughs> One of our Muscovies. You know, these ducks, um, we got the, the, the ones up front there, and they seem to just hang out in their own little groups. So the geese basically stay back in the pond area. They don't wander. Um, this guy here <laughs> doesn't wander. Uh, and neither does these ones. They're the smart ones because they get the pond here with all that duckweed uh, on the pond. Uh, now we do get some other ones that wander and there are a few over in the uh, enclosed area. Uh, we've got the chickens in here which was the peafowl area. Uh, and then we do have uh, what do we got here? There's the ducks there. <laughs> you can see them all lined up in that area there. So the reason why these guys here are in lockdown uh, is because they like to wander. Uh, and we have a highway right there and they like to go up into the ditch. Uh, so we figured, well, we're going to lock them up for a bit. 
Uh, we want, we don't lock up our animals or our uh, uh, chickens or ducks. Hey bud. <laughs> um, just because uh, we haven't really had any problems with predators other than the coyote that came by this past spring. Um, but um, you know, if, if there are a lot of problems that occur, I know a lot of people lock up their birds at night. Um, we tend to um, keep our area more fortified, which, um, you know, plans are, is to change out our electric fence and put up a more permanent fencing. Uh, so I did shore up the electric fence in the uh, last video. And here's Piper. She's in the alpaca poop pile. Now the alpacas like to poop in the same area, which is great. Uh, and then um, people um, come and pick up some alpaca poop because it's great for the garden. Hey Piper. Oh yes. Yes. Oh yeah. You're busy, aren't you? Pekin duck. <laughs> or Drake, I should say. Uh, and these guys here aren't mallards, they are rowan ducks. So you can clearly see the boys from the girls, or the ducks from the drakes. We have one, two, three drakes, and uh, three ducks. So those are all rowan, and they basically kind of hang out together. A uh, little bit with the geese. You'll see them kind of interacting with the geese. Uh, one of the animals we did lose was one of the Chinese geese this spring. Uh, and it was the male, so we're left with the two females. Now, what are you doing picking on those guys? You know, geese are... <laughs> they're interesting birds. They think that they are at the top of the hierarchy. And they are privileged birds. <laughs> and they can do whatever they like. <laughs> mm. So these here are the checks, and you can tell this one here is the male, and he is more protective. Stretches out his neck like that. <laughs> and he's just telling the ducks to get out of his way because uh, he's coming through. <laughs> the nerve. What are you doing, buddy? Like, look at this. He always does this every time I come out in the yard. And he, he just, and you stand there and he grabs your, he grabs your foot and it's like he wants attention. Do you want attention, buddy? Oh, poor boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one lost his, uh, his partner uh, in the spring. So we had the high guys um, and uh, we got them in last year, I believe it was. And uh, his buddy passed away. Um, so this is, I believe this is high, uh, and now I guess he just, uh, he's just lonely. He's got no one to hang out with, although he sometimes hangs out with a couple of the other Muscovies, uh, but they're not best friends. Uh, they're just kind of acquaintances. Do it. Hey? Yeah, silly. Look, it's Scotch. Scotch is out. <laughs> Isn't he? Yeah. Look at this. He's even talking to the pig, Petey. <laughs> hey, Petey. Are you social today? Can I pet you? <laughs> Petey's, Petey's not as social as Piper. Oh, and it just, uh, you know, I want to make friends with him, <laughs> but he's just so grumpy. <laughs> you guys uh, were out in the field earlier, and now uh, I guess they figure it's going to rain soon, so they'll just come in. <laughs> hey, Daisy. Yeah, <laughs> these guys are hilarious. We see them out uh, in the bush, and Daisy is the, uh, she's the hierarchy here. So wherever, uh, whenever she comes in, uh, if the other two are around, then uh, usually it'll be Levi that follows her because he's just in love with you, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Meadow will follow up. So it's quite interesting to watch them. Uh, and they'll call. So she has been seen a number of times walking back uh, and then calling out. 
uh, and then Levi will call back and then you'll see them start running up from the uh, far back, uh, the two of them. And then she just kind of turns around and goes back. She's like, oh, I was just calling in the kids. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, you guys uh, stay dry. So we decided to let Scotch out uh, since he was all alone inside. Uh, and we've got uh, one male that is fixed. And then we have a female. Uh, lop which she is over there so it's just the two of them in here uh, so I just wanted to go out and check on Flora and the boys and see how they're making out it looked like they were doing pretty good earlier oh and there's Chaco <laughs> so Chaco looks like he's pretty comfortable he is now lying down and how you doing, Flora? Hey, are those boys keeping you uh, keeping you in line? <laughs> she has been eating um, like crazy. She, I think she's kind of in heaven out here because we've got all of this grass here. <sighs> hey, buddy, and how you doing? You fitting in nicely? Good job. Those horns, they go out, up, and out, and then they have a point to them. Uh, on each one. Oh, big stretch. <laughs> uh, so of course, yeah, so here's another pair of, uh, of ducks. Those are the Ancona ducks that are up here. Uh, and they just, everybody kind of keeps, uh, keeps to their own designated area. These guys haven't gone up onto the highway, uh, so we're fine with them being in this area here. Uh, now I did do a little bit of work here. Uh, shoveling out some of the old stuff. I came out to cut off that wire, which I finally got rid of that. Uh, doesn't look like... No, Carl was in there and then Billy went in, so I was able to basically clear out the front section and I left Carl a little island that he was sitting on there. And I figured, oh, I'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll get the rest later. And then, of course, Billy goes in there and uh, he uh, decides that he wants to go for a little nap as well. Uh, so the boys must be up further up front. Uh, I do feel a few raindrops coming, so I'll uh, head back and we'll check on the other goats. Just as I expected. Uh, it's starting to rain, uh, so all the other ones come in. <laughs> uh, where are the little ones, though? Where's your babies? <laughs> you know, that seems to be a question I ask them quite often. Uh, it looks like we are missing... No, we've got Coco over there. Um, we've got... Yeah, no, I bet you I know where they are. They usually hang out back there all by themselves. Uh, but uh, with the rain, we may see them uh, coming in at a pretty quick rate. No, they don't seem too concerned, but they're coming in. <laughs> Oh, kids, where's your moms? Where's your moms? Alpacas. Uh, we've got Bronwyn and Tinker coming in. So, yeah, it looks like the rain has come. The alpacas actually like the rain. Uh, and one thing that, um, <laughs> something else that happened is Tara decided to do some trimming. Uh, so she did some alpaca trimming. We picked up a, uh, a good quality pet trimmer. It's not really a sheep shearer, um, but she didn't want to go down uh, far to the skin. Uh, last year when we had them trimmed, uh, they, it was right down, you could just see their pink skin. Uh, but they were susceptible to fly bites. Uh, so she wanted to do things a little bit differently this year. And she left, uh, <laughs> she left a little bit on the head there and on the legs. Paula likes to lie down. So... Uh, she wasn't able to get down far on her uh, on her belly. Uh, so she's going to work on her a little bit later, uh, probably, possibly even uh, during the week. And then, of course, there's Marley. So, <laughs> oh, Shanzi, you look so cute with your little helmet on. <laughs> I forgot about Atlas. Uh, he had been hanging uh, Tara was in the back there at the garden 
uh, which we'll probably get to a little bit later after it stops raining. Uh, and Atlas was right there pecking on bugs and just hanging out. Uh, and now they must have gone in because he's now uh, <laughs> up here and he's kind of got the mentality of Fernando. Uh, he loves to hang around people. And of course there's Fernando. What are you doing? Are you underneath the table? Trying to get out of the rain, buddy? <laughs> That's silly boys. Well, fast forward one day uh, and it is now Sunday. So happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there and a very special happy Father's Day to you, Dad. Hope you're doing well. Um, now, it's also, actually come to think of it, um, it's Tara and I's anniversary. Uh, so we've been together, well we've been together f for 30 years now, um, so that's quite a long time. Uh, we've been married now 23 years, um, so time flies, we still feel as young as ever. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's uh, exciting too. And it's the first day of summer. Uh, so, how are you doing? How'd you make it through the rain? <laughs> She's a little wet, so I guess she was out. Uh, we have had quite a bit of rain uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, 15 hours or so since I, I ended uh, the other segment just moments ago. Uh, and we actually had, um, not here, but south of us, uh, they had some hail, some pea-sized hail. Uh, so it was just a summer storm that rolled through and um, wet everything down quite a bit. Uh, but I wanted to go over one other thing. Uh, Carl and Billy aren't in here, so let's go find them. We just can't get a break, hey guys? It's now raining again, so they're coming to me. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was Carl's coat. Uh, so two weeks ago in the video, um, I showed you that Carl had an issue with uh, his skin. Uh, he was itchy, probably some parasites, and what we ended up doing is put coconut oil uh, on his skin, and that would uh, suffocate uh, any, oh boy, <laughs> suffocate any, um, any parasites, uh, and then of course it would condition his uh, fur as well. Well, you can hear the rain on the uh, tin roof. <laughs> I think I'm stuck in here for a while. <laughs> um, and, uh, and this is the result. Whoa, rain. So you can see here his, uh, his fur has come back nicely. You can't even see his skin. Uh, and that's after only two weeks. Hey buddy, looking good. So we're in the big house. <laughs> it looks like the other two boys uh, went over into, yeah, they're over in the other building over there. <laughs> uh, we gotta stay dry and wait for this to blow over, don't we guys? All right, while we're waiting for the uh, storm to pass here, uh, let's talk about uh, goat's eyes, which is an interesting subject. Uh, so if we look at Carl here, Carl, show us your eyes. See how they're slits? Um, so what that means is uh, it's all about the plane of view. So their plane is on a horizontal plane. Uh, now cats have eyes that with the slits going up and down. Uh, so they are more of a, uh, a vertical focal plane. Uh, and then of course other predators uh, like uh, owls, predatorial birds, um, humans, um, coyotes, wolves, um, we've got the round pupils. Um, so what that does is goats uh, and sheep are more um, prey animals. So with that focal plane that runs along the horizon, they can actually focus on a slit going across the horizon uh, just in case there is movement in the bush uh, and there's a predator that's coming. Uh, now. Um, cats, what they do is they don't have really great eyesight, 
close up. That's why if you see them going for a drink of water, uh, they'll usually go down slowly and then they'll kind of uh, hit bottom or hit water and then start drinking. Um, but their eyes are slitted upwards, so their focal plane uh, is up and down. So when they go in for a hunt uh, to get a mouse, you'll see them go up and they'll crouch right down. They'll stay low uh, so that is not to be seen, uh, but that they have that uh, focal plane that goes up and down. And then of course owls and, and humans, um, we focus on single points. Uh, so if there was a um, let's say uh, an eagle or an owl flying across they scan the area and then they lock on to a certain point uh, where the prey is and then that's where they dive down uh, so there's an interesting fact about why goat's eyes are slitted sideways so I'm in the barn and come on here guys <laughs> so I'm in the barn here and I forgot about some other arrivals that came in. Tara actually reminded me uh, and it was a neighbor across the street that passed away of cancer. Um, now I'll let you tell the story. So it's Eric from across the road. Um, just a real hippie kind of laid back kind of guy living, wanted to start living off the land. He had gotten some chickens and uh, lots of advice from us over the years. And uh, so we've now taken on his, his hens, his girls and his roosters, uh, 17 total. And uh, just, you know, it just, it just means a lot for me to be able to take his birds and know that he loved them so much. And uh, just to take that on for him and, and make sure that they're all okay. Um, so there's 17, most of them are Isaac Browns, but there's a few different colors and his, his goal was to have multiple different kinds of chickens. Um, and he used to come over and help here and, you know, always willing to lend a hand over here. So Eric's chickens will live on here at the 10 Acre Woods. I think it's safe to come outside now. Uh, it's, there's a few little drizzles falling down, but it seems just like that kind of weekend. Uh, it is a, um, oh yeah speak too soon and now it's starting to come down a little more all right um so the wild birds uh, that we had the fly catchers that were underneath the deck uh, so they did fledge and in the last video i said oh three day three days it's likely going to be another week um i can't see them they're they're still too small and they were they were fairly small last weekend uh, when I had a look at them, all the little fuzziness on them, uh, their feathers hadn't come back in yet. But, sure enough, on Wednesday, they, they grew out all their fluff, their feathers came in, uh, they were seen practicing, uh, hanging out, practicing flying, stretching their wings, cleaning and preening their feathers. Uh, and sure enough, uh, one clip they were there, and the next clip, they were gone. Oh Paula, are you all wet? <laughs> it looks like they're having the same problem that I'm having uh, with uh, doing the video. <laughs> they come out, they graze, they go in, they come out, and uh, <laughs> the alpaca actually like the, uh, like the water. You can actually take a hose and spray them down and they just seem to love it. So, so I'm out here in the garden. Uh, now we are in zone 3A, 3B, 3B I guess it is, and I've been watching online and there's been some uh, uh, zone 7 YouTubers that uh, are actually harvesting now, but uh, that's what you get for living in a colder climate. Uh, so these are the potatoes here, so they're doing well, the things probably will take off now. Uh, in the next week since uh, we got all this rain it's supposed to be nice and warm and sunny uh, so we've uh, kind of finished off our lattice section here so this will remain as such with no poly on it uh, what is uh, going to happen here is these guys are going to start to and they have already started to grab a hold of that trellis uh, then they're going to be able to grow up the trellis uh, and it should look nice and green in here. Uh, now, also something we did on Saturday, Sunday, last Sunday, uh, after we uploaded the video from last week, uh, we finished off by putting the poly on this. Uh, so it was a little bit of a challenge. It was, um, it went up, uh, it was a little bit windy, let's just say that. And we had some issues with that. 
uh, we actually slid it down the deck uh, and we had to actually pull away from the deck uh, to get the um, the poly down. We, we took a metal rod and wrapped the poly in it so it would drop down because of the weight. Uh, and then we wrapped over top, took another section and seamed it. Uh, so we didn't have much time to actually secure it and the next morning we saw the whole thing blowing in the wind, filling up with air. Uh, so Tara and I came out and we kind of um, rigged things up and tightened things, uh, tightened things down on it. Uh, so it um, it's doing good. We're gonna finish things off. I think this week uh, I went online and checked for a controller uh, So that I could run my exhaust fan uh, And the exhaust fan Tara went and set up right here uh, So this is a fan that we've had kicking around the farm here for a while. We did have another greenhouse and uh, We used it uh, uh, for that as well. So it works really well. Here's the intake on it. Uh, so there will be poly that goes up across here and likely put a zipper door on it. Uh, and then the exhaust comes out uh, the back end of the greenhouse here. Uh, so that should work well. I'm thinking about uh, installing the controller uh, possibly in around this area here. Um, I don't want to really put it on the shelf to take up that room. So I may just uh, rig up something and make a box and uh, secure it in there. Now, what I've used in the past is a mercury switch, uh, and then uh, and I've actually got that in the barn out there. Uh, we actually cool the barn in the winter time uh, by turning um, a thermostat or setting a thermostat to essentially one degree Celsius, so just above freezing, uh, and it's the humidity we want to get out of the air. Uh, so that we don't have any kind of mold or anything growing in there and then of course the animals inside can get sick from that. Um, so what I've done there is I actually took a mercury, um, uh, mercury thermostat uh, but because it's for the heating cycle I had to run it through a relay and switch it over so this new digital one uh, is going to work out really well. It's supposed to be here on Monday. Uh, and then I'll go over, uh, maybe I'll go over the installation and setup of that in case you have a greenhouse. Uh, it was relatively inexpensive. It was about 23 bucks, so I ended up buying two of them. Well, that is it for yet another video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to hit that uh, like button. Uh, and if you have any comments, please put them down below. Uh, it was an interesting uh, weekend trying to uh, get everything all pieced together. Uh, speaking of piecing things together, uh, if you want to check out how we built the greenhouse and welded it together, uh, I'll put the link up here uh, and you can check out that video. Until next video, uh, take care and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. <laughs>